If you want to follow along with the examples in this lesson, you're going to need a basic view app. Our root app component has a simple paragraph that can be toggled on and off with a button. We've also added some styling to the paragraph so that it'll be easier to see the animation later on. Just like regular websites, we can use CSS animations and transitions to help create a better user experience on our app. There are several benefits to using them in our app. It helps the user navigate the app by understanding connections between elements. It lets the user know what's happening by giving feedback in response to an action. It can draw attention to new or essential features and elements. It can encourage user engagement. And it creates a unique and memorable user experience. To help with our animations and transitions, Vue provides us with two components. The transition component wraps the element we want to animate with open and close transition tags. Vue will add transition classes to an element that controls the animation of that element onto the page. Let's start with the enter state where we have three classes. The enter from is applied before the element enters the browser window. This is where we set the element starting CSS state. The enter to is applied when the element enters the browser window. This is where we set the element's ending state. The interactive is applied when the element is transitioning from one state to another. This is where we set the duration and easing of the transition. To demonstrate, let's wrap the paragraph in our example in transition tags. Then, in the styling, we'll add transitioning from invisible to opaque with a two-second duration. If we run the example in the browser and click on the button, the paragraph becomes more and more visible over two seconds. We also have three classes for when the element leaves the page. They work exactly the same as the entering classes, but are applied as the element is unmounted. To demonstrate, we'll let the paragraph transition out from opaque to invisible. Because we want the duration and easing to be the same, we can combine the two active class selectors by separating them with a comma. If we run the example in the browser and toggle the paragraph, it will fade in and then out. If we're transitioning to a state, that's the default for an element, we don't have to create a transition for it. For example, the default opacity for any element is 1, so we don't have to specify it in our examples enter to class. The same goes for the leave from class. And because the classes would then be empty, we can remove them completely. If we run the example and toggle the paragraph, everything still works as expected. View allows us to name our transitions by using the name attribute on the transition component. When we name a transition, View automatically replaces the V in the class name with our custom name. To demonstrate, let's add a name to our example's transition and replace the V in the class names. If we run the example in the browser, everything still works as expected. We can tell View that we want the animation class to apply when an element is rendered on the page. To do this, we add the appear attribute to the transition component. We don't have to explicitly set it to true, its existence implies a true value. To demonstrate, we've added a transition component to our examples button and removed the one from the paragraph. We'll name it and add the appear attribute. While it enters, we'll make it fade in and slide down from outside the top of the page. If we run the example in the browser, the button will fade and slide in when we load the page. When we need to create more complex animations, we have to use keyframe animations. A keyframe animation performs animations at certain stages of its life cycle, specified as percentages. If we want a keyframe animation to be applied to the view transition, we add it to the enter 
or leave active class. For the demonstration, we've added a keyframe animation that adds a shake to the fade and slide in, and added it to the interactive class. If we run the example in the browser, the button will shake a little after the fade and slide in. If we want to animate multiple elements, we need to use the transition group component. This component doesn't wrap, but rather replaces the original container element. For example, if we have an unordered list, we would replace the UL tags with the transition group tags. By default, the transition group tag will not render a wrapper when the application is compiled. But we can specify one with the tag attribute. The transition group component also supports names and the appear attribute. As an example, we'll use a simple to-do app. To keep the demonstration simple, it'll start off with two predefined items and we'll only be able to add new items, not delete them. If we run the example and add a new to-do item, it will immediately show in the list. Now, let's change the example and replace the UL in the template with the transition group tag. Because the final animated state is the default element state of the list, we won't specify the enter to class. This time, when we add a new to-do item in the browser, it will slide in from the bottom and turn from green to black. View allows us to control changes in element positions with the VMove class. All we need to do is add the VMove class and specify the transition we want it to affect. If the transition group is named, we use that name in the class. To demonstrate, we've created an example that shows a sortable list of characters from popular games. We'll let the list slide in from the bottom when the component first renders. If we run the example in the browser and click on the sort button, the list is sorted alphabetically. But there's no animation when it does. So let's add the vmove class and target the transform from the enter from class. This time, when we sort the list in the browser, it's animated. When elements are rendered based on a condition, we use the transition component and not the transition group component. Even though there are multiple elements, they won't be rendered together. One element replaces the other based on the condition. To demonstrate, we've created an example that toggles between an error and success message if a data property is true or false. When we run the example in the browser and toggle between the messages, they animate successfully. The animations look a bit jerky as they switch, but that's not because we're using transition instead of transition group. When we're switching out elements or components, the new one will try to render on the page while the old one is still exiting, causing a sort of snapping effect. To fix this, view gives us the mode attribute with two settings. In out, we'll first transition the new element in, then transition the old element out. And out in, we'll first do the old element out, then transition the new element in. To demonstrate, let's add the out in mode to our example. This time, when we toggle between the messages, the animation works correctly and there's no more snapping. In the next video, we'll learn how to animate roots. Thank you for watching, we'll see you in the next one.